Kingshay are independent dairy specialists who established in the early 90s to take research into practice. The building itself is interesting in that it's got a fabric roof and we found this uh, manufacturer in Holland, ID Agro. Very good ventilation because they're five meters to the eaves. There's two things to do with it in terms of light. One is it's lightweight. So this roof material for our 90 meters by 28 meter building weighs less than three and a half tons. We've been free to design the interior of the building without having to accommodate big wide RSJs. The other light, it transmits light, it's translucent. We chose to put robot milkers in for a number of reasons. We need to be collecting a lot of data to be providing good information for research. The whole process is done with a single attachment. The cluster goes onto the cow's teats and the first thing it does is clean the teats. It then stimulates milk letdown and four milks the cow and all of that's sent down a waste chamber. It then milks the cow and before the shell comes off each teat it applies a post dip. So it's one attachment does the whole thing. A real benefit of any of the robot systems is that it milks the cow's quarters individually. Rotary brushes are absolutely not a gimmick. Uh, the cows absolutely love them and it gives the cow stimulation. Uh, it's an enrichment factor. They love rubbing around on it. It keeps their coat healthy. It gets the dirt off their coat and it's just a really good thing to have and I would strongly recommend anybody to have rotary brush for their herd. We've got two different uh, cubicle divisions uh, in place. Uh, one is the Easy Fix uh, cubicle which is um, made of plastic and the idea of that obviously being it's flexible so if a cow bumps into it or leans against it, it gives. The other one is the K38 which is Kingshay's own design and the 38 refers to the degrees of the top rail of the division that it goes up at to precisely position the neck rail of the cubicle in the right place because you then set it to the average size of your cows. We've um, chosen to put rubber flooring along where the cows spend any appreciable amount of time standing. So um, we've given them rubber flooring where they stand to feed and rubber flooring in the small waiting area that they wait in before they go into the milking robot. We're giving them a measured paddock for six hours, which is enough for six hours intake of all the cows. And then the grazing cake switches and sends the cows to a new fresh paddock. So they never go back over a previously grazed paddock. They get four fresh grazings every day. And uh, at any time during each of those six hour periods, the cows are free to come back and get themselves milked and go back out to the grazing. The primary thing we were looking for was cows that would be good for grazing. So we needed a decent strength of cow that would get out there, walk out to the grazing. My colleague David Petter and I uh, came over and uh, David looked after us, took us to see quite a number of uh, herds uh, uh, and so on and we were able to see what was there. And um, once we came back home and he sent us the records of the cows and we were able to look at the records and then come back over and actually select the animals we wanted. and then. The shipment of those was arranged in Arctic loads, 40 at a time, over the space of one week. Each truck arrived and the cows, they walked off, good as gold, four in the morning, quietly walked into the building, no problem at all. We think we're probably going to hit about 8,250 litres with around about 4.6% fat and 3.6% protein. Now I would say for a brand new herd set up in an absolutely brand new system, that I'm happy that we've, we've done that.